Well, there's another important question that you mentioned considering democratic challenges. You talked about the development of crime. We know that, unfortunately, mafia is prospering uh, uh, with the withdrawal of state intervention. Uh, we know that this is the case uh, uh, when it comes to Italy, for example. We saw the situation and the role of the mafia uh, in waste treatment, uh, waste management. Uh, and in fact, uh, mafia has more to uh, gain uh, from investing in waste treatment than in heroin now. So uh, the population, therefore, needs uh, perhaps more authority. Uh, uh, and even, to, uh, uh, for, insta uh, for instance, uh, there is the example of how the population reacted uh, to uh, uh, closer uh, cameras uh, in uh, uh, the cities of the UK. So what do you think about uh, uh, these uh, changes? I would say uh, that uh, the uh, current threat uh, today is mainly uh, that uh, citizens expect uh, a state a state that is very strong, that has a st very uh, strong stand against uh, uh, crime, for instance, uh, and uh, in my country, uh, of course, uh, drug trafficking is a huge scourge, uh, representing $6 billion in terms of uh, income uh, per year. So it gives you an idea of how powerful these cartels are. The state is, of course, doing its best. Uh, yes, but the, uh, the demonstration in Mexico called for more authority. The population uh, uh, in the streets uh, of Mexico wanted uh, the state to have more authority. Uh, yes, indeed, because there had been a wave of kidnappings, uh, uh, and so uh, the population uh, reacted to this. Uh, now, the question is, what is the right balance uh, between uh, uh, repression and uh, uh, individual rights and freedoms? Yes, I will give the floor in a couple of minutes uh, to uh, the audience, but before that, uh, let's give the floor to Thierry de Montréal uh, uh, to have his, uh, his uh, take on everything that he has heard so far uh, from different corners of the world uh, uh, about uh, this new form of governance and the end of the monopoly situation and that it seems is required, at least that's what all the participants mentioned. Uh, well, I'm going to make just a, a few uh, very brief comments because uh, we don't have much time uh, to come back uh, to uh, the uh, notion of uh, um, heterogeneous uh, uh, situations. Uh, the world is heterogeneous uh, now. And we have to take this on board, uh, and we have to accept the situation and try to manage it as best we can without any bitterness uh, on any side. Uh, what has struck me particularly in this uh, conference is that all the speakers, in one way or the other, uh, emphasized the need for greater tolerance, uh, the need for more dialogue, and the need for a better understanding uh, between the, the different uh, peoples of the world. And, uh, 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 Mr. Gomez's uh, uh, presentation was uh, very interesting uh, in this respect. Uh, there is this idea that uh, uh, democracy in many corners of the world uh, is uh, losing its legitimacy. So we have uh, this run-of-the-mill idea in Western ideas uh, that nothing is better than democracy. But uh, this uh, idea uh, is now being challenged in many regions of the world. And this uh, should provide us uh, with food for thought uh, uh, in uh, uh, well, we've had uh, a lot of interesting discussions uh, on uh, uh, this, uh, uh, on uh, the different democratic methods uh, used in traditional uh, societies, especially when it comes to minorities. We had a very interesting discussion yesterday on this, uh, and I think this is uh, something that we need to think about. Uh, uh, I'm sure you're going to work between the, uh, meetings and between forums on this, and I think this uh, item should be on top of the agenda. And another idea uh, that uh, Mr. Wad and Mr.
Mr. Sakong, uh, il pointed out uh, uh, as well. Uh, one has to be very careful to, uh, to make sure that the current uh, problems do not uh, lead uh, to uh, a total rejection of liberalism uh, 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 and uh, an attitude which brings us uh, back uh, to a very authoritarian uh, sort of uh, governance. Uh, yesterday, I said something, uh, uh, oh, I used an expression, to, uh, I said uh, we needed organized liberalism, uh, uh, which means that the institutions also need to play their role. We have to find uh, the capacity to uh, manage crises, and the only way of doing this uh, is to be well prepared, well in advance. Now, once again, unfortunately, we don't have enough time, then, but... Uh, 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 this is uh, a comment that I'd like to make uh, to President Messenger uh, uh, with the collapse of uh, Yugoslavia. Well, this took place in the context of the collapse of the Russian, uh, of the Soviet Union that no one had uh, been prepared for. Uh, and we didn't have the means uh, to cope with the situation to, at the time. Of course, had we been better organized, we would have uh, perhaps uh, uh, done more damage control, to, uh, perhaps. Uh, we could have avoided uh, uh, this uh, situation which led to a war. Now, of course, uh, this is another discussion to, uh, altogether, uh, but I feel uh, that the recognition of the independence of Croatia and Slovenia uh, uh, should have uh, taken place in a more general context. Uh, I think it would have happened uh, no matter what, but it should have taken place uh, in the case of a more global arrangement and a more global to, uh, context. And then there is another uh, issue, which is the global versus the regional. This uh, point has come up uh, uh, very frequently as well. To, uh, there's the principle of subsidiarity, which is very dear to Europeans. A lot of questions uh, need to be addressed uh, in a regional uh, context, uh, that is to say, uh, by the countries and the states that are directly impacted by the problem. Uh, not everyone uh, uh, should interfere with every single problem. Uh, and of course, all this needs to be done to, uh, by predefining the general rules of the game. Tomorrow, uh, President uh, Medvedev's speech will probably cover what I am going to say now. I think that uh, we have. Uh, uh, there is a general consensus now uh, that the United States are no longer the leaders of the planet. And this doesn't by any means mean that uh, uh, this is an anti-American statement. I'm not an anti-American myself, uh, but I think the United States have failed to a certain extent uh, in this self-appointed role of a world leader and in the way in which financial institutions and economic institutions internationally uh, uh, functioned, uh, and in fact, I was very struck by what Mr. Gomez uh, Robledo said. Uh, uh, there is a, a total lack of consistency uh, uh, on the part of the United States uh, as far as Latin America is concerned. Uh, when George W. Bush was elected, he claimed that his priority would be American, uh, would be Latin America, and all this was completely forgotten and fell by the wayside after the events of uh, September 11th. Now, I think that even even after this crisis is over, the United States will continue to play a very important role. And we all, uh, a lot of us here, wish that this should be the case, of course. But I think that they will no longer have uh, this exclusive leadership. I think it is the end of this exclusivity, the American exclusivity.